Hello, I'm Alderwoman Sheila Finlayson, and welcome to Our Annapolis. Today, I have a very special guest, Mr. Tony Spencer. Mr. Spencer has a newfound passion that he's going to share with us. But before we get into his passion, just a little bit about arts and public places. Every month, Arts and Public Places, one of the organizations within the city, sponsors an art exhibit on the halls of City Hall. And about two weeks ago, Mr. Spencer's work, his artwork, visual artwork, was displayed. And so I've invited him here today to share with us a little bit about this newfound passion and to tell us where he's going next. Okay. Welcome, Mr. Spencer. Thank you, and thank you for allowing me to to have this opportunity to share. Actually, it's not a newfound passion. Uh, it's nothing uh, that you see, you'll see with some, some of my artwork that is new, except this particular project. I've been painting since 1967. It's just that most people knew that I was a vocal artist, and we just never talked about it, the, vocal, the visual part, because I never brought it up. But I've been painting since 1967 in high school, and I guess sold my first professional paintings in the 12th grade uh, in 69. And uh, as a matter of fact, three of those pictures are part of the current exhibit. Wow. Yes. So what this one shows is uh, acrylic on canvas. And some of them have been, uh, th those frames put on archival paper in frames. But they come in different mediums. So I understand there was one large picture that I had the, the good fortune to see. Yes. And from that one picture painting, you were able to extrapolate out several other paintings. Right. A friend of mine, Dr. Joan Gaither, who's a quilter, which he was a major professor at MICA in Baltimore City. When she, she said when she teaches her students, she asks them to look at a painting, say Renoir, and find paintings within that painting. Mm -hmm. And when she said, said that to me, all of a sudden I started seeing things that I hadn't saw before, and I painted the picture. And uh, my wife started seeing things. Then my daughter started seeing things. And so uh, we made pictures of individual shots of certain segments. It wasn't necessarily of a person's face. It could have been just a design. And, but along with this exhibit, I have four other separate exhibits within it. But they all have the theme of family. The theme is tribe, tribal, but it's T-R-Y-B-E hyphen A-L-L, -L, all tribes. Mm -hmm. So you play on words. And so I'm just going to say the meaning of the word tribal in this case means that I don't care what denomination, what race, what gender, you're talking about family. You're talking about family supporting family. So is the name of your exhibit tribal or this one piece of artwork out of which you've um, extrapolated several others, the tribal? The main picture is called Tribal Celebrations. The exhibition is called Tribal. Okay. okay. So if anyone were to walk into City Hall today, they could walk through the halls and, and observe, take advantage of tribal. Yes, along with my uh, great-great-grandfather's documentary quilt, James William Spencer, who was the founder of Freetown in Glen Burnie in 1845. So that's the first thing you'll see when you walk into City Hall on the wall on the right, a six by eight foot uh, quilt that my wife and, and you held. Uh, and my daughter and some other folks. And we know you help because of all the needle sticks you got in your finger. What a discovery of quilting. And um, so it, was, it wasn't, it's a family quilt, but I had friends and family to help. Well, that was my first uh, opportunity <laughs> to be involved in a quilting project. Yeah. And it was a phenomenal project. Um, I've, I've been amazed that Ms. Gaither and others, yourself included, yeah. have brought quilting back to life. Mm -hmm. You know, our grandparents made quilts mm -hmm. and passed them on to the children and the grandchildren. Mm -hmm. um, and they told stories too. And that art kind of went away. Yes. And so now that lost art has been found in your generation, my generation, yes. so that we will be able to carry that message on. Yes. Uh, I think going into City Hall and looking at your grandfather's quilt, you could read so much about the Spencers. Yes. You know, and so there is great value in every family creating a quilt and yes. telling their story. Well, the great thing about the quilt, James Spencer had, and his wife Harriet, had nine sons and three daughters. Mm -hmm. 
And the generations, generations that came from those families uh, would be the Spencers, the, the, the uh, Gaithers, the Kiss, the Williams, the Turners, and that's just to name a few. Now, my grandfather was married to Ada Henson, so my great-great-grandfather on my uh, maternal side would be first cousin to Matthew Henson's father. So we have a lot of history. Matthew Henson, the famous explorer. The famous explorer, Matthew yes. Henson. So it's a lot of history on both sides. And uh, what's so important about the quilt is that it's a documentary quilt, and the truth that's on fabric, on a painting, is long after you're gone, it's still here. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing about it, it's a legacy. It leaves a legacy. And so whether your life is positive or negative, you leave a, le you leave a, ne a legacy. And that's something we all need to understand. So build on that, I've realized that my uncle who, I had an aunt who told us about Matthew Henson. And because we were young and didn't see it in the history books, okay, well, well, she went into a coma for six years before she died. But she had started passing on the history about James Spencer and Matthew Henson to my uncle Henson Spencer. And he started coming to Annapolis and getting information from the archives on the land purchases of James Spencer. So while his first purchase was in uh, December 26, 1845, he continued buying land until 1880-something. He died in 1885 and acquiring almost 1,800 acres of land in this county. So he and other men, they were, the thing about this quote, it shows the trusteeship in people. Mm -hmm. And they were trustees in this community. In 1871, James Brenton and five other men bought land in the area we call Freetown. That's defined down to the district, to the pebble, where it's located for the ex ex uh, purpose of educating Negro men and boys. It says it in the deed that he, well, that he purchased, the land he purchased. In 1873, he and the same five other men bought land from this uh, Methodist Episcopal Church down in the area we call Sunset Beach or Waterbury. And it was, the place was there for itinerant preachers who were traveling from time to time to have retreats or whatever mm -hmm. for the faith community. They bought the land from this, uh, from this church for $900 in 1873. 1877, these same six men sold the land back to the church for $1. So you kind of read into that, they bought the land so the church wouldn't lose the land. Mm -hmm. And they sold it back to them four years later. So these are pioneers, and we talk about community trustees. Uh, we're talking about people like yourself. I served on the school board. You have a responsibility. And seeing what these folks did back then, when being a free man in the midst of slavery, and got those things done, is so much more we can still work on doing. So this is not just an art exhibit. It's about history, it's about family, it's about responsibility, it's about culture. It's about what a community can do together when we work together. So, so what's the next stop for the quilt? The next stop for the quilt would be uh, 49 West with Brian and Sarah Callahan on West Street, 49 West. Uh, it's gonna be um, uh, March 1st through the 30th, and my reception will be on March the 6th from 5 to 7 p.m. At 49 at West. At 49 West. So will you have your entire exhibit on display there or is it just the quilt or? The quilt is too large to be at mm -hmm. 49 West. And I'm not sure how many of my pieces I will fit there. My pieces are, are not just small sizes. I see that Brian can take large sizes, small sizes. But with the width and, and the height of some of my paintings, I don't know how many I can get in there. Mm -hmm. This one had 21 paintings uh, all together. Um, I have paintings that they haven't seen, they have, I haven't had on exhibit yet because I need the space to do it. But I'm not sure if I would put them all out at one time anyway, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. um, I've had some offers from some designers already uh, to do, make my, some of my paintings into materials and, and other, other products. I'm taking this slowly because it's a new venture, but it's a real venture that I want to pass on to my, my, my children, my, my family. Uh, they've been involved with this, uh, the planning and some of the things we've been doing. So uh, it's very important to have that kind of support. That's, that's my base. Well, from what I can see from here, uh, it looks very exciting. Um, and I've, I've walked through the exhibit in, the, in City Hall, and uh, it's extremely impressive um, for an art that we didn't know you had. Um, so I don't know whether we're able to show some of. Yeah. Flip. Okay, okay. Let's do it. And I'm not sure how the light will, will work yeah. on this, okay, but um, so 
Now these all seem to be pieces from the big... On the, right. And right now you're seeing some pictures that some are in the exhibit, some are not. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, one of these are not in the exhibit. Uh, one of these are, one of these are not. So um, these two are different, one's a different size. Um, this one's in, that one's not. But also, along with this, these two pictures right here, along with the small one here, are, the series was called Safari. I did those in 1969. And these are on muslin, not canvas, but muslin. It was a cloth that we painted, uh, used semi gloss paint to get the base from the back. And then I used a small pump to spray. Um, the background and then use geometric forms to make the, the different things I made. This was supposed to be a tiger looking through the Everglades. This one, I painted it vertical, but I, I signed it horizontally, one more river to cross. And this one, as crazy as it sounds, this one is, this small one right here is called Swinging on the Back Nine. Okay? <laughs> so that was 1969. This portion right here and these two right peak, left peak, came from this one painting called The African Warrior. And so did this one, Two Calm Prince. And um, this, people, I ask people, what do you see? And they'll say, well, I see a guy. No, you don't see a guy. This is a woman. And I say, look at the elongated neck. This is a woman. And she's an African warrior. And so one further up is called Eve's warrior. So those were done. This was done in 2008. The Forest of My Ancestors kind of depicts the area where my great-great-grandfather bought his first 56-acre tract of land that we call Freetown today. But it started at what we know of as being Molly Creek. The area was called Smith's Forest. So that's the forest of my ancestors. That was 2009. 2010, this rare white and blue, the colors of our country, is called Angry Anxiety. And it's painted from the viewpoint of the Native American, which is part of my family as well, of the decline or the destruction of our ecology. So this one, uh, that's the largest one I've done. That was done in 2010. So I have some standalones, but it still has the mindset of family, of nurturing, of community. And so with that, um, those are the things that you, you see in the exhibit. And these are just, this is a poster of James Spencer's documentary quilt that is in the uh, City Hall right now. And of course, we never sell the quilt, um, but we can sell posters of the quilt. So that's available for, for sale. Mm -hmm. And the rest of, rest of this right now, uh, I'm gonna give you a glimpse of something that is just uh, my next project. And I actually painted this next project before, I actually drew this next project before I did, um, did the, uh, I'm sorry, let this slide, before I did the, um, this project, Travel. Travel was going to start off from this little piece of paper right here, that you see, okay? Mm -hmm. I was going to make uh, symbolic instruments that represented music and sound. And th the only thing that's on here that's close on my, in my project, current project, is a keyboard, which eventually became a bridge. So, <laughs> but this is my next project. Uh, it's called Ancestral Flight. And uh, I'll just say that, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. Well, that's exciting. So we get a peek into the future. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, how exciting for you and for the community to be able to, sh to experience your, your art. Yes. So, well, we look forward to um, seeing more exhibits, and you have an exhibit coming up at 49, 49 West, West, West next and, month. And I'm, at this point, I'm free in April, and I purposely did that because I wanted, I've joined some other organizations in D.C. and some local ones, one up uh, Main Street, not Main Street, I'm sorry, State Circle. Um, so I want to have my art in different places, and sometimes they only take a few pieces at a time. Mm -hmm. So I still have more of my artwork that you haven't seen yet. I'm going to, I will have framed or put on canvas. Uh, but I'm back at Bates Legacy Center. I was there for almost three and a half years. We've had, I think, two exhibits, and when one exhibit came down, they still wanted me to leave mine up. Mm -hmm. And so I left it up. Uh, I'm going back in May to the Bates Legacy Center, this time not just with the quilt, but with various pieces of art as well. I think the Legacy Center is an untapped resource also. Maybe. <clears throat> because Maybe. most people don't realize that there's always an exhibit yes. going on in, in the center. Uh, and I think anyone can reach out to the Bates Legacy staff to find out what their hours of operation are. Yes. But there's always an exhibit going on. May there. I mention a few names and, and contact information? Sure. Uh, if you know Ted and Betty Mack, Dr. Joan Gaither, 
uh, Yvonne, Gaither, Smith, uh, a number of us. Ms. Irene Hebron was a member. Ms. Isabel Cunningham from West Annapolis was a member of the Northern Arundel Cultural Preservation Society. And they started out this group in St. Mark Church with just people in the families doing family quilts, mm -hmm. individual quilts. And then they invited some other churches to come and do the same thing. And then it became a nonprofit. And then he realized that people just need to continue telling their story for the generations that are coming behind. And so we formed, we continued doing quilts, and they kept telling me, Tony, you have to do your quilt about James Spencer. And I said, okay, I'm helping everyone else. And then Joan just cornered me. She said, sit down. Mm -hmm. What are the ideas? What are the things that were that, uh, very popular about James Spencer? What did he do to inspire you? He was a family man. He worked artlessly. I mean, in 1880, his census showed that he had six homes, uh, hundreds of acres of oranges, not oranges, but, but um, apples, pears, peaches. They have livestock. I said, so all of these things that are happening, someone needs to hear about this and know about this. And as soon as you started talking about it, someone says, Spencer, wasn't his mother a Gaither? Yes, uh, gracious, I'm a Gaither. Uh, Matthews, yeah, Green. So you found the connection, and then you start encouraging other folks. You need to have someone in your family who's doing this. Because when I'm gone, it needs to continue. My website, uh, which let me share with you, is the word enrapture. Enrapture is the word that means to fill with delight. E-N-R-A-P-T-U-R-E-5-1.com. Enrapture51.com. That's the website. Uh, so a lesson to be learned to the general community about preserving family history and the fact that a quilt is that opportunity to do that and to be yes. able to pass it on. Well, I want to thank you, thank you for coming in and sharing your art with us and sharing a little bit of your family history. Okay, thank you. Thank you for being a part of this. You oh, helped me pleasure. out. My yes, pleasure. Did.